This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Volume right back here with another episode of XCOM Enemy Unknown. In the last episode, we found a crashed UFO and finally captured the crystal itself, or the Outsider, which apparently is an antenna to who knows what, and we've got to research it. However, we're going to do a little bit on the side before we actually get to that. So today, we're going to do some more cleanup and all that other stuff. So, see, anything I need to work on right now before we get on to that? I'm almost thinking about upgrading my squad size here pretty soon with some extra money, as well as figuring out... Because at some point, I'm going to need to actually start destroying facilities and rebuilding them at some point. Because I realized if I want to get the most out of a lot of these facilities, I'm going to have to, like, break out old uh, old stuff and rebuild it new so it's all, like, linked and connected. I mean, you don't have to do that, but it definitely makes it a lot more effective if you try to link all stuff up correctly, you know. So we'll see. We'll see what I'll need to do to fix all that. Because uh, I don't know if I want to build a laboratory here, for example, when I could probably... Remove the lab, like remove the containment field. Maybe build it up there. Remove the workshop and all that. The only problem is that the money involved it costed all this, so I don't have a ton of it yet. As soon as we start getting satellites and all this other stuff, we'll be able to get a bit more money. But uh, yeah, for now it's a bit of a tough decision, like what you want to build. Like I was, uh, okay. Well, for now I'm, we'll just go on. If if a mission happens, I might upgrade that squad thing and then go do the mission that type of thing. But all right, let's uh, wait till the next satellite appears. Commander, our satellite is prepped and standing by for launch. We are ready to deploy it on your orders. Might do that soon because uh, I think. Uh, let's see, what is the? Because the council reports in five days, and if we can get a satellite up, that'll get us a little extra dough. Uh, for a thing, man. Now, what do I want to do if I? If I put one in Brazil, we have I can get eight only eighty, and we get uh, get a scientist a month, which is a nice, I guess. And if I eventually get in uh, South America, both of them we can have we have ways, which is the uh, one where you can uh, uh, dissect people in one uh, instantly or whatever. But the fact I've already done a few already almost makes that a little moot. Uh, let's see, and I forgot the I forgot the uh, description of the abilities of all the others because. Wasn't all in the one where you get like thirty percent extra uh, uh, income at the at the month, and then air space and increases our ability to for bases? I know that we already get extra knowledge. All we heard about were flying saucers. The aliens certainly have come a long way. But the future combat wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be bad either. And of course, we have all the. And they're kind of high on the panic rating, so I almost want to just do one of, the, like I said, I either want to do Brazil, or or India or Australia, either one, so we can uh, get those engineers. We we'll also reduce the uh, panic levels on those. Probably, let's do Australia. That that doesn't give us a ton of money, but it still it'll get us. Uh, because there's plenty of other countries we could get more money from. That's why I did the United States first. It was like $180 per month. Ooh, rah. But, uh... uh or we could do... Like I said, we could do Brazil and then... Yeah, let's do... Let's do Australia. Travel time, five days. This is oh, we'll... I'm receiving you. What do you mean you think you saw a snake? What the hell does that have to do with anything? Was that for snakes on a plane? Okay, anyway. Wait, we'll be able... That says five days. We'll be able to get that before the council? No, we'll get on that day, so we might not get the credit for that month. That's... All right, well, whatever. We need to reduce satellite panic anyway. Launched. We have no interceptors in range of the satellite. We'll not be able to engage any aircraft that we detected. I know that, so that's fine. But anyway. Um, okay, so we're building another one. And we'll need to start getting more satellites at some point. What's the cost of another satellite up like? God, 150. I kind of have to wait till the next month when we get more money to do that. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let, let's go to activities and get that autopsy done. Okay, let's check it out. 
chit and plating available for manufacture. Even after years of research and study, until now I've never encountered something that is quite as beautiful yet equally as deadly as this species. Unlike the other aliens we've counted thus far, it is anth uh, anthropedal in nature, plated in a sleek black exoskeleton. The chrysalids, as we're calling them, based off their reproductive habits, measure over three meters long from nose to tail, standing almost two meters high when perched on their hind legs. Their tax is not only extremely deadly, but also necessary for their reproduction, as the intended victim is not immediately killed, but instead turned into what can only be described as a mindless shell, akin to a zombie, which serves a, as host to its offspring. When a human is bitten, an embryo is injected into the host and immediately begins to ge gestate. Once gestation is complete, which remarkably lasts only minutes, a newborn chrysalid will emerge, destroying its host in the process. We can only wonder why the aliens would utilize what appears to be a, a savage, unpredictable creature. In any case, this is certainly not a creature to be trifled with, and our troops would do well to exercise extreme caution when exchanging this, engaging this species. Targeting another uh, example in the field through the unit analysis view may provide additional information to its combat capabilities. Okay. Now we can do chit plating. Light plating made from chrysalid exoskeletons, this material provides additional protection and a significant reduction to melee damage sustained. Use the build option to build such a thing. Let's uh, look at that really quick. I think we need quite a few chrysalid corpses to build it though. Yeah, can't do it right now though. So that's, that'll be good for those who go into melee like assaulters. That'll be good for them. But anyway, let's start a new research project. Let's see. I think I'm gonna wait a bit longer before I start doing the outsider shard, because I wanna I wanna start getting something like the next step in like either armor or weaponry before we before the enemy starts doing their next step as well. Um. Uh, let's see. Let's do. Let's do. I'm usually a defensive guy though. Uh, let's do weapons. So let's uh, research. Uh, I think we want to start researching. Ooh, we got plasma pistols. Although that takes a while to research, though. Let's see. Yeah, we've already got, because of our credit we got from whatever, so might as well take advantage of that. So yeah, let's do beam weapons. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's do the that. That's our transfer. Good to go. Complete. Ah, Bryce is good to go. Incoming transmission. Hello. We are extremely impressed with the progress of the XCOM project thus far, Commander. Your recent results were beyond our expectations, and that is not a statement this council makes lightly. All right, we did quite well this month, and we got an A for effort. And we got three scientists, three engineers. Helps us a little bit further, and a bit more money. Of course, all Remember, that will be spent almost we immediately. Will be watching. Yeah, we didn't get that uh, satellite in time. So, all right, let's look at our. Since we got a bit more, well, we didn't get. Arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. All right, yeah, we need to start looking into building more facilities. I'm trying to think if I want to build satellite links like that, or if I just want to go down that type of thing. Huh. Because it's still link as long as it's the general area. It doesn't have to be a straight point. Like, you could build one here, 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 here. That type of thing. But do I want to do that? Because I want to have more satellites. Although at some point we're going to need to start getting... Uh, start need to buy more ships and everything like that. So we can... Uh, interceptors so we can... Uh, have access to other areas. So... Um, yeah, that's a bit of money, though. Yeah. Okay, we'll do it. 14 days, huh? Yep, okay. Can you buy satellites even though you don't actually have the... Uh... Like, the extra thing for them? I wonder if that... Let me look at the situation room really quick. Yeah, I think you can still buy them. It just... You just can't put them in orbit if you don't have a satellite thing for it, so... Oh, but that'll be using, like, all my money up at the beginning of the month already. So, 
because we're getting close to that point where we might start hitting multiple points of of a uh, panic and stuff like that. So we can't actually build it if we don't have it. Not if you know, they launch the satellite. We don't. We could still buy it though, right? Well, I'll give it a couple of days, maybe a couple of combats. And let's look at that. I think I want to go ahead and do squad size improvement. That way we have our maximum squatty output so we can start leveling up multiple people at once. Let's see. I think that might be it for now. All right, well, let's uh, get to the next day. Satellite will activate. And beam weapons have been Earth. researched. Australia. Laser pistol available for manufacture and laser rifle available for manufacture. By studying the methods used by aliens to manage energy consumption and heat dissipation of their weapons, we have advanced our existing laser based weaponry design well beyond what we had previously envisioned. Remarkably, we have a working prototype that is both capable and portable. A development that one had at one time been considered impossible, although we had to reduce the size of the focusing lenses in the process, we found very little decrease in the overall output or accuracy of the weapons during initial testing. Cool. Laser pistol. The laser pistol relies on our latest advancement to provide a more powerful sidearm that does not require reloading in the field, which we can now buy. Uh, laser rifle. The laser rifle relies on our latest optics technology to offer a substantial increase in output over the conventional X9 rifle. But we had to buy those, so. Well, we got a slightly reduced day because of the extra scientists we got. Uh, let's do armor, and then we'll do outside of shard priority. Okay. Let's look at our what the costs are for those. See if I want to start buying those yet or not. 18, let's see, 6 credits for pistols, or 18 for laser rifles. With that, And that's only rifles, it's not like shotguns and stuff like that, so that doesn't count for like my shotgun or anything like that, so that'd be more for my uh, support guys. And then the pistol would be, we might buy one, can we... Uh, it's immediate, huh? We can do that for our support guys, at least. We'll buy one for now. Boom, baby. All right. And then we can uh, equip one of our soldiers with it if we want to. Let me look at the loadout for that. Let's see, what does it say? It's a. Well, I know it's unavailable to snipers, but I need to know what class it'll. So you can't technically equip it to a tat uh, tactical character. Let's see what it says here. Medium range, base damage 5, critical damage of 7. But yeah, it's just an improved version of the of that. I don't know if I want to equip it to someone who's not initially designed for that weapon. I mean, you could he could use it, and it is better. At least for now. Four to six. So it is technically a better weapon. Might be better to give it to, like, yeah, like one of our, uh, just one of our uh, support characters or something. Or I might give it to a newbie if I need to level up another character now that I've, uh, Got an extra spot. Usually I use the extra spot for... Usually I always use two support and two assault. And then one sniper, one heavy. Although sometimes I'll use two heavies depending on the mission parameters. I might start bringing in another character in missions now. Just to kind of level up another dude. Um, and then if we have the money later on that officer training school. We can either get the... What is it? Uh, new guy? Where it automatically gives them a squatty rank. So it, you can... Uh, you can automatically figure out what they're going to be and go accordingly to that but uh, and we'll only equip it when we actually get to that section of the until we actually get to a fight then I'll equip them yeah, it looks like the days are going pretty slow so far okay four laser pistols if we do that we can get 165 reward which is more but 
Let's see. Can spare a few. Japan's asking for. Okay, so let's look at. They need four, right? So how many alloys does that take to make a pistol? Take six alloys, and I've got 135. Now, I have to be careful because some of the best weaponry in the game requires quite a bit of alloy, as well as lyrium and stuff like that. So, but that is a lot. That's not. Let's see. That's they need four. So that's 24 alloy. And it only costs me... So the investment's probably worth it at this point. I'll just have to not sell alloy anymore. I did sell a few earlier, but I'll have to hold off on doing that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I think it's the Situation Room? Yeah. We'll go ahead and complete the request. Could do that later, but I'm going to do it now. If the engineer can see... Yeah. All right. Let's see what it says. Let's hope the Japanese troops are able to stand their ground without cauterizing themselves in the process. Okay. Yay, now we get some extra dough. Nice. So now we could buy, like, we could buy another weapon for another dude if we wanted to. That's 10 alloy, though. Oh, yeah, I did buy a... Although that means get, gr getting rid of grenades. Although I haven't really been using grenades, because I've been trying to keep uh, keep most creatures alive to keep their stuff. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, buy one of those for just to have in our inventory. Uh, do I want to build another facility though while I'm here? Or at least clean out one since I got a little extra dough. Might go ahead and do that just to at least have them open. Might, and then when that excavate, I'll do that one and maybe build the next access lift down. But yeah, do I want to build anything there? Or do I want to leave this open as my extra bar right here? And just have a do the satellite uplink thing there. Let's see, that'll increase the speed for... Because I want stuff to re-research a little bit faster. Okay, we'll do that too. We'll lose a little extra money at the beginning of the month, but, uh, because of that, but, yeah. Okay. I think we're good, so let's keep going. Nice, that was a nice little extra, extra little tidbit for us. Alright, Carapace Armor is done. Now we can manufacture it. We've succeeded in creating an advanced suit of body armor based off the alien alloys recovered from the field. These are the same materials used extensively by the aliens in the hull plating and internal structure of their craft. As we've already seen, the UFOs are capable of sustaining heavy impact with only minor structural damage, which inspired our research into personal armor plating of the same design. However, the downside to this exotic material is that we currently have no means of replicating it on Earth. With a limited pool of resources available for future projects, we'll need to manage our use of these alloys carefully. The engineering team is awaiting orders to begin the fabrication process. Once complete, we can see how this carapace armor fares on the battlefield. Carapace armor. Our carapace armor was designed to offer substantially better protection against the alien plasma weaponry through the use of their alloys. Test indicates a substantial survivability increase relative to conventional body armor. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'll do one more thing and then I'll do the priority. Let's see. Yeah, let's do experimental warfare and see what happens. Well, let's see. I want to do the basically the fast ones first just because, you know, we're going to get through those quicker. So, uh, although our understanding of the alien technology is still limited, what we've seen so far is enough to revolutionize the combat as we know it. If we are to level the playing field, we must adapt these alien technologies to our own. So let's go and do that. Alright, nothing else we can do. Let's wait for something to happen. I'm kind of surprised we haven't been attacked by anything yet. That's interesting. They're probably waiting for the, like, the last minute. Or we might have a month where nothing happens. That's quite possible. All right, well, we've got it done, so now the foundry can be constructed and the Phoenix cannon can be manufactured. As we continue our research in the alien weapon fragments and the other materials recovered from the field, we've come to realize how the aliens managed to make these substantial substances work in conjecture with one another. While reducing the size of these components is often a challenge in itself, we decide to focus our initial efforts on a weapon more suited to deployment on, 
on our interceptors. This cannon was designed to concentrate energy with a small target area and should be capable of punching through the armored holes of the alien craft. In addition, we've also passed a number of interesting concept conceptual designs on to the engineering team. Dr. Shen seems confident that given the appropriate resources and testing facility or faculty, whatever, it's probably facility, he can bring many of these concepts to life. The Phoenix Cannon. The Phoenix Cannon is capable of delivering massive burst damage, but its limited range puts the interceptor at a greater risk during combat. And the Foundry. Developing new combat items or approved current items in the Foundry. Let's see, before we do that, let's look at what the Foundry option has. Oh, Commander, we don't have a thing to show. At this point, show. the Foundry would certainly help us further hone the effectiveness of these new weapons and equipment. I'd recommend we get started on construction sooner rather than later. Yep, I can't do, I can't check out what a foundry can do because I don't have the because I don't have an open spot yet. So, all right, let's uh, check the next research option. Uh, let's see, got heavy precision lasers and heavy lasers. Heavy lasers, I think, are upgrades to the. Uh, um, let's see, ship base cannons. Credit applies. 50%. What is that one? The alien weaponry appears to use a series of crystalline weapons. Because uh, I assume one of these is... I bet this one is for your shotgun and and uh, one for your heavy characters. So, uh... Okay, one more and then we'll do the outsider research. One more! Just just hit me one more time! Just just one more time! Oh, oh. Commander, our satellite is prepped and standing by for launch. We are ready to deploy it on your orders. All right, so let's look at that. Do we want to launch it? Now? Well, probably because we've got the we've either got Brazil, which is pretty close to uh, Panic, or India, which will give us closer to being. We might go ahead and do that, like with our next uh, satellite thing, just to uh, build the satellites and get uh, um, uh, Asia currently under under our control. <laughs> I mean, uh, or Brazil, one of the two. Either one would work. Uh, I think the engineering team is getting antsy. They might be more excited about the new weapons than our troops are. Yeah, probably. Yeah, let's do... Let's do India, I think. Satellite yeah, I know that. I know that! Hold up! Um, okay. How do I build more ships? That's the thing I need to... Maybe maybe we can check on our... Okay. So, we can order interceptors. So, we got one in Europe and America, because I just moved one of my old ones there. So, right now, we've got some in Asia. So, how much does it cost? 40. But it costs 20 more per month to do that. But that'll at least give us an, uh, access to UFOs in that area if they're flying around. Yeah, let's go and order one. I shouldn't, but I'm going to. All right. Well, that'll at least keep us covered there, so. All right. Well, uh, been a slow episode. Not so much in the way of combat, but we have to prepare for the alien invasion, uh, or even more alien tricks when they occur. What will the aliens have up our sleeves? We have another, will we have a month of no issue? Find out next time in the thrilling episode of XCOM Enemy Unknown. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.